just going to ask you, anybody got a testimony from the Freedom Crusade? Anybody? Anybody? It was a waste of time, huh? Thank you. Who, who raised your ass also? What you got? First of all, I'm only... Hold on, let me make sure this is on. Okay. Um, I'm 23, and I've had health problem after health problem after health problem. Mm -hmm. And I got diagnosed with, um, it's called tarsal tunnel. So it's like carpal tunnel, but like in my foot, and it oh would my hurt goodness. my whole leg. Couldn't wear pants or anything. Like it was like nerve pain. Mm -hmm. And um, I had been, you know, confessing. And, oh, I'm sorry. It's okay, sweetie. Um, I had been confessing, you know, the Word of God and... It had gotten a lot better. But if I was on my feet for longer than five minutes, extreme pain, and I have not, I've been walking three miles every day, no pain. No. <laughs> Hallelujah! Woo! Lord, just walking three miles, that's a pretty good deal, isn't it? Anybody else? All right. I don't, I'm not seeing anybody. Oh, okay. There's somebody back here. You got to come where I can hold this mic where you can. That, that's far enough. I got to come right here. I'll hold it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm used to holding the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> I know. So, um, you know, our family has been going through transitions lately and financially been struggling. And um, so the Lord just kind of pressed upon my husband and I to give $20 every night. And for some people, $20 may not seem like a lot, but for us, it was a lot. Yeah. And um, so anyways, um, some friends of ours are moving out of town and um, ask us to go ahead and put uh, their house on the market for them. And within three and a half hours, they had an offer that was $2,000 oh, wow. over what they were asking. Wow. Um, the buyer did not ask for anything, and they're even paying their own closing costs. So, so you got that listing. So. Yes. Wow. Amen. That's yep. awesome. Yes. Good start. Yes, absolutely. Hey, you never know what 20 bucks can do, yes. I can tell you. The Lord dealt with me. Listen, the Lord, I had that same thing one time. Uh, several years ago, it was a little bit more money than that, but it, it was a lot of money for me. But to do something on five, for five nights and to give $100 every night. Now, I did not understand why the Lord wanted to do that or why or anything, but, but supernatural blessings came out of it. But, and it's just being obedient. And that, that's the key is just being obedient. All right. Anybody else? Oh. Oh, you mean I got to walk all the way back there, Gene? Okay. <laughs> I'm coming. I'm coming. How you doing tonight? The night that you had people come up with broken hearts. Right. I was struggling for months with a broken heart to do with my work and the people that I minister to, disappointments and rejections and letdowns. And it had really incapacitated me. And I didn't realize how much until after you laid hands on me. And then I went and sat back down. And I felt like things were just being pulled out of my heart. Praise God. Just like cords and yeah. things just being pulled out. And since mm. then, I've had a renewed, you know, renewed strength, a Amen. renewed passion. Get up, go, get back Amen. in there and you just forgive and That's keep right. doing it for the Lord. So Amen. thank you. Awesome. Hallelujah. Anybody else we got one more? Okay. Oh, okay. I'm coming. I'm coming. I've already heard a bunch more than this, but but um, anyway. Jesus. So, um, my oldest daughter. Jasmine, she couldn't attend Freedom Crusade. And the only night that she was able to attend it was Wednesday night. A um, couple hours before, we were in the living room for a couple hours talking to her about a lot of things and questions and doubts she had. And so we <clears throat> kept telling her, you know, this is your night. 
where God is going to minister to you. And so as the conversation we had, her words were like, I just want more from the Lord. I just don't know all what God has for me. And so that night we felt and she felt it and it was hard for her to get up from her chair and she came up with her other sister. God touched her life. We're seeing the change in her where God is just opening doors, Hallelujah. doubts and everything that yeah. she had. God answered them that's so, that night. That's wonderful. So, amen. Hallelujah. Isn't that awesome? Praise God. Glory to God. Listen, I, I know you know this if you've been in the Freedom Crusade, but but when you get in that atmosphere and you allow God to work in your life, it is amazing what, what can happen, the supernatural that can work uh, even in young people that in some sense may not even want to be there. And I'm not saying that about Jasmine. I'm just saying in general. Um, I'm going to talk to you tonight. I'm going to share probably for the rest of the summer, which is it'll be gone before you know it, but about faith. We went through, a, you know, a series talking about the patterns of faith, and I just kept feeling a stirring in my spirit just to talk about it. And, you know, we, I'm not being negative about this. But we've got Christian um, uh, radio stations, you know, on here in town, and, and I've tried to listen to them. Um, but, you know, nobody's preaching faith. They preach just the opposite. You know, well, whatever it is, it's the will of God. You know, if a hammer falls on your head, God did it on purpose to teach you something or... You know, something, well, you're going to have a headache. That's what's going to happen. But the point is, I'm not trying to counter that. I just realized that, that um, sometimes we, as a pastor, I, you think you, people know things, and they really don't know. I remember a number of years ago now, I was with, um, I, I'm not going to call the name or anything, but it was a, uh, I was in a meeting with some men from the church, and and um, one of them said something that was just totally contrary to faith. And he'd been in the church 20 years. And I said, you ought to know better than that. He said, well, it just kind of slipped out. Well, you know why it slipped out? Because you've been hearing that stuff, or the devil speaking into your ear, or the world speaking into your ear, and, and you're not dealing with it. Because you have to stay in faith. You, you it, it is not something that just kind of, it's just part of the package when you get saved. You have to stay in faith and live a faith life. The just shall live by faith. Not just get saved by faith, live by faith. And uh, so I just felt like I needed to kind of do this and I'm going to talk about a couple of different people in particular. I'm going to talk about Abraham and then about Jesus. The, Abraham was the father of our faith and I'm going to show you that tonight. Jesus was the author of our faith. Now, there's a big difference. Abraham showed us the way to do it. Jesus told us what we could do with it. But listen to me tonight. If you're born of God, if you're a child of God, you have faith. Okay. Listen to what I'm saying. You have faith. Think, think about it this way. Uh, you're here tonight. Why are you here? Well, I'm a Christian. I want to come. I want to hear the word. That's faith. You've got, you got faith. How many of you believe Jesus was raised from the dead? Amen. All right, listen to, what, listen to what the Lord told Thomas. Thomas, blessed are those who believe and have not seen. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. There's faith there. Now, it may, the, the thing that, that, that you have to be careful of is that faith can be intimidating. I know when I first got saved, I, I, I got saved, uh, and I, I, have known, I have known nothing but how to walk by faith. I got saved. I started going to a church that preached faith. And uh, you might, during the Freedom Crusade, some of you don't even know who Kenneth E. Hagin is. But, but uh, he, is, he, was, he preached the word of faith and uh, wasn't the only one, but, but, but was kind of like the, 
the leader of, of, of what we call the Word of Faith movement, which sent missionaries all over the world. And, and um, uh, his, his Bible school is all over the world. In Brazil, their Bible school is all over Brazil. Um, uh, and preaching, preaching the Word of Faith. It's not, a, um, it's not something that is strange or should be strange from, for us because Paul said it is the word of faith which we preach. Well, what is the word of faith? Well, I'm not going to go into it tonight, but basically it's you believe in your heart and you speak with your mouth. Amen. You believe in your heart and you speak with your mouth. Jesus taught us that. And, and so... Don't get intimidated and say, well, I can't do that. I actually had a couple of my church when we first started the church. They had been original members of the church. And, and, uh, and they called me and said, we'd like to come talk to you. And I went and sat down with them. They said, listen, we're going to go to another church. And I said, well, why? And they said, we can't do what you preach. Basically, they got intimidated by faith. You, you know, you can't get intimidated by it. You try to, you've got to move in, into the things of faith, of, of what God wants. And hey, Jesus said you can speak to mountains. Amen. Well, I, I can tell you right now, that can be intimidating. But you know what? If you just take steps of faith, if you'll understand just how to move forward in faith and let God... Uh, 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 inspire you and understand where faith comes from. Amen. It's in you, but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But it's not just any word. Well, anybody that preaches the word, faith is going to come. That's not true. If you go read that, if you go read that, and I'm, I'm trying to get back, get to what I want to preach tonight. So if you go read that, Paul was talking about the word of faith, which we preach. So if you want to have faith, you've got to be around people who preach faith. You've got to go be around people who say, God will do it. All things are possible with God. God wants to work in your life. You can speak to your mountain. You can believe and see results in your life. You can see God move. You can see the supernatural. You can see different things working in your life that you're not going to see if you don't hear that. Because it doesn't fall on you. And so what you're going to hear is, well, whatever God says, you know, whatever God, anything that happens, it's God. I, I, I Listen, I don't, I, Lord, forgive me for saying it this way, but I hate the phrase, God is in control. Now, listen, I don't, I believe this thing's going to end just like it, God intends for it to. You, okay. But listen, everything that's happening is not God. Well, you're going to learn something. Well, listen, if, God, if that's the way God teaches, he's a pretty poor teacher. But that's not, what, that's not how he teaches. He's the father of spirits. So he works with your inner man. Okay. You can't go back to the Old Testament and see how God, God was dealing with a carnal, unbelieving bunch of people. It's different when you're a believer. And so faith can do things in your life. It gives you confidence. It can give you victories in your life. Where you were going to see failures, you see victories in the, in, instead. They may not come right away. You may have battles on your hand. You may have struggles on your hand. But if you don't let go of your faith, your faith will work in your circumstances. Are y'all listening to me? So don't get, don't get tied up in the fact that... that um, well, uh, faith, I'll tell you, that's, that's just for people that, you know, those faith giants. Well, there are people that I've been around that I've been really intimidated by in their faith. Because I've been around uh, uh, Brother Hagin. I've had meals with him. I've been around him. I've been in his meetings. I, and, and to hear some of the things God's used him to do is amazing. I've been around Oral Roberts. And you hear about all the miracles and all the things, and I'm thinking, who am I to be, to be a faith person? But I'm where I am, and you're where you are, and we've got to live by faith where we are. Amen? Amen. We can't be intimidated because 
Somebody else seems to be doing something you're not doing or greater than you. You're not measuring against somebody else. All you do is you go to the Word of God for yourself. Amen. If you learn to do that in your life and in your daily life and in where you are in your life, and we are all in different seasons and different circumstances of our lives. But in all of those, you have to focus your faith on those things and let God work. Because he wants to work. But listen to me. God doesn't work with whiners. Amen. In fact, he puts them in the same category as adulterers. In 1 Corinthians. So you can understand, he's not, he's not big on whining. He's big on you responding to him because he is God and you don't see him, but you believe in him. And you, you know that he'll work in your life because you're a child of God and he cares for you and he loves you and he's given you his word. He's given you his promises so that you can take those and put them to work in your life. Every promise is yes and Amen. We've been given precious promises that we might live a divine life on this earth. Perfect? No. You know why? Pinch yourself and you'll find out. Because you wear flesh. You have emotions. You have baggage. You have stuff you've got to deal with. But bottom line, don't get intimidated by faith. Let God work in your life in faith. You got mountains in your life? Start speaking to them. Don't, don't say, oh, it's so big, it's so big. Well, it is, and it's just going to get bigger. Because you're saying it. Amen. So, so listen, don't get intimidated by faith. And the other thing is you will never be perfect at walking by faith. You, you have to put your faith wherever you can. Let me just, I, I still had not gotten to what I want to preach tonight, but this, let me just talk to you. Maybe I, this is all I need to do is talk to you tonight. But because I, as a pastor, I see this all the time, you know, and people are in a certain place in their life and, and because they're in a certain place in their life, <clears throat> they're, they're struggling in that area of their life. And, and because they're struggling, the devil tells them, well, you don't have any faith. Well, yeah, you do. It may not be you know, mountain moving faith yet, but you have it if you'll just let it rise up on the inside of you and you'll start speaking and believing and expecting God to do something. So don't get discouraged in the way that you operate. Amen? But let me just show you that there is a, a really a divine flow of faith that will result in you being able to obtain the promises of God if you can understand and hear uh, what the Spirit of God is saying tonight uh, through Abraham. So let me, I'm going to just show you this, uh, and, and I'm not going to read a lot of this, but in Romans chapter 3, it's a, you, you, you ought to go just read Romans uh, the chapter, four, I'm, chapter, four, verse, chapter 3 and verse four, chapter 4, but I'm going to read chapter 4, verse 3. I got them turned around, okay? I'm going to just read part of this. Listen to what it says. Abraham believed God. He didn't believe the world. He didn't believe his circumstances. He believed God. And it was accounted to him for righteousness. In other words, God said, Abraham, because you have faith in me and you believe me, I'm going to count you as righteous even though you're no better than anybody else. He wasn't. He was a liar. Yeah, go read. He, he, he talked about his, his, his wife being his sister because he was afraid he might get hurt before a king. He wasn't perfect. But God counted him righteous for one simple reason because he just believed God. What God said, I believe. Well, you transfer that over to us, and I'm not going to get into this tonight. You transfer that over to us. That's exactly what happened with us. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and God said, you're right. You're right with me. You're righteous. 
Well, I don't feel very righteous. Well, you don't look very righteous, but that doesn't have anything to do with it. You, listen to me, you believed God. Just like Abraham did, you believed God. And that's what he did. And because of that, he put his confidence and his trust in God. But it was a process. And this is what you've got to understand. Yes, he believed God, but to get what God promised was a process. Everybody still with me? So in Romans, it talks to us about that. And so in Romans chapter 4, verse 12, listen to what it says in verse 3. Abraham, hold on a second. Yeah, uh, chapter 12, I'm sorry, chapter 4, verse 12. Sorry, got my, 4, chapter 4, verse 12, okay? Somebody's talking in my ear and I, okay. Okay. Listen, talking about Abraham in verse 12, it says, the father of circumcision to those who are not only of the circumcision, now listen to this, but who also walk in the steps of the faith which our father Abraham had while he was still uncircumcised. In other words, there were certain steps that Abraham took to obtain the promise of God, which was... A son, number one, but that wasn't a major promise, but that's the one we're going to talk about, okay? So So he was the father of our faith. You got it? He believed God, God accounted it to him for righteousness. We believe God, God accounts it to us for righteousness. Okay, same step, same kind of faith. Now we have a different dynamic because Jesus created a whole paradigm of believing for us that's way bigger than the scope of Abraham. And I'm I'm not going to get into that tonight, but we're going to look at that as well. So listen. So there were specific steps that Abraham's faith took. Certain things are always the same in faith. When you're moving toward a promise of God in your life, you're believing God to work in your life. There are certain things that are always there, and we're responsible to walk in those steps. And those steps lead to a point of receiving from God. It's a point. You're going somewhere. Abraham went somewhere, all right? So let's just look at it here in verse, in, uh, in verse 17. Talk in, in, yeah, let's just, yeah, we'll just start right there. Verse 17. Listen to this. As it is written, I have made, now this is God speaking. I have made you a father of many nations. Now listen to this. In the presence of him, talking about God, whom he believed, God. Now, he believed God. God made him the father of nations. But now listen to what it says here. In the presence of him whom he believed, God. Abraham believed God. One translation says it this way, and I believe we can back that up from Jesus' ministry, is he believed like God. You're going to find out that the way we operate by faith is the way God operates. He believed like God. He believed God. He believed like God. That's why Jesus said over in Mark chapter 11, have the faith of God. But most translations say it's have the faith of God or have faith like God. Wow. You mean I can have faith God? That's how we connect. That's how we connect. Everybody still with me? So it says, uh, in the presence of him whom he believed, God, or in the sight of God, he believed. Well, what was the basis of his believing? Well, listen to what it says. Who gives life to the dead. Now listen, and calls those things which do not exist as though they did. Faith calls those things which do not exist as though they did until they are. That's that's the way God works. 
And when you operate in the faith of God or faith like God or even faith in the sight of God, that's the way you're going to have to operate. You're going to have to go from the unseen, not from what you see. You're going to have to realize that, you know what, faith is not something that you see. Everybody still with me? All right. So just hang in here with me and let's look at this. So he said, we, he calls those things that are not until they are. So let me just stop here a minute, okay? Abraham's big faith, big faith step, we want to call it that, was when God said, take your son, your only son, and take him to Mount Moriah and offer him there for an offering. And it is so amazing to me that Abraham didn't bat an eye. He just went. He didn't care about his son. He was willing to kill him. No, that wasn't it at all. He knew the God who raises the dead. Are y'all still here? He knew the God who raises the dead. And Hebrews chapter 11 says that he knew that even if he killed him, he would have to raise him up because he'd already promised that he was the seed for the future. So he knew God. He knew how God was. He knew what God could do. He knew what God wanted to do. His faith was on the line because of what God had promised him. All right? So there are five steps that Abraham took in his faith that'll help us. All right? So listen to what it says in verse 18. Okay? who contrary to hope, talking about Abraham, who contrary to hope, believed, in hope, believed, so that, now listen to this, so that he became the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your descendants be. Now listen to me. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. If you don't have an expectation of something, you will never ever use your faith to receive what God has for you. You've got to have an expectation. Yeah, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm expecting. Well, hope is a good thing, but you've got to attach your faith to it. Let me tell you what faith does. Faith nails it down to now. Hope is an expectation out here. Faith nails it down to now. I'm receiving now. I'm believing now. Do you get it now? It doesn't matter when you get it. Your faith says now. Faith nails it down, nails your hope down. So listen to what it says. It says, who contrary to hope. You know what that means? There wasn't any hope. The Amplified Bible says, human reason for hope being gone, he hoped on in faith. If, you, if you're going to just reason with yourself about faith, you're, you, you, you're not going to get anywhere. You have to reason with what God says. That's where you're reasoning. This is what God said. Yeah, but this. Yes, but that. Yes, but this. It doesn't matter if you're reasoning with God's word. It will always have a rebuttal. It'll always have an answer. God's word is is what you have to stand on. And just hang with me, I'm going to show you this. But you've got to understand that hope, when you lose hope, and you all signs point to defeat, then discouragement takes its place. Yeah, but I've been dealing with this for so long. Get out of that thinking. The past, you've got to nail this thing down and say, no, I am going to receive what God promised now in Jesus' name, and then move forward from there. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So just stick with me, okay? So that's what Abraham did. When all natural reason was gone, he kept on hoping by faith. All natural signs pointed to defeat. Why? Because he was 100 years old. But I got good news for you. We have an eternal hope through Jesus. And what Jesus did on the cross and in the resurrection has sealed our fate for eternity. Forever. 
they never change. The promises, what Jesus said, never change. Your faith can attach to it anytime, anytime. So, first of all, you've got to make sure that you stay in the expectation. And that when it seems like natural hope is gone, you don't give up. You don't give in. But it's not enough to do that mentally. Okay, you can't do it mentally. You've got to have a confidence in something. And here's what you have to have confidence in. Let me read verse 18 again. Contrary to hope, in hope, believed so that he became the father of many nations. Now listen to what it says. This is really important. According to what was spoken. What does God say? That's where your faith is. It's not in, I'm hoping this is going to happen. I'm hoping I can get this. I'm hoping I'm going to be healed. I'm hoping God's going to provide. I'm hoping this is going to happen. It has to be according to what he says. So the first thing you're going to have to learn is, what does God's word say about my situation that I'm going to have to apply my faith to? Abraham was steadfast on the fact God said it. And if God said it, if I kill my son, he's got to raise him from the dead. That's intimidating faith right there. No matter where you are with your faith, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to find out what does God's word say about my circumstances. Now listen to me. Abraham had a specific word from God. And you say, well, I don't have one. You have a whole book full of promises. Now listen to me, because this is very important. He had a word from God, a spoken word from God. Now listen, if you'll understand this, this is going to help you a lot, okay? In the New Testament, there are two words for the Word of God. One of them is the Word of God. It's the Logos of God. It's that Bible you've got or however you've got it, however you're using. It's called the Logos of God. It's all the Word of God, okay? But there's another word that's used. It's called the Sword of the Spirit, and it's called the Rhema of God. It's the spoken Word of God. Now, that's the spoken word out of your mouth, but it's also the revelation word to you from the word of God. See, you can read the Bible till you're blue in the face, but if you don't ever get a word from God, if it doesn't jump off the page and slap you upside the head and say, this belongs to you. It's not a rhema word. It may be a rhema word for somebody else and not be one for you because you didn't get it. Well, how do you get that? It's real simple. First step is you've got to find out what you need. Second thing is you've got to find out whether God promised it or not. Is it in his word? Now, there are lots of different, and we're not going to get into this tonight, but there are lots of things you can look at. The primary thing you can do, did Jesus provide it in redemption when he redeemed us? Okay. So I can promise you more than likely you don't have a problem that redemption is not already dealt with. Okay. But what you have to do is you have to put that before you until it becomes yours. I've told this story before and I know most of you probably heard it, but years ago, I mean, way back, back in the eighties, I was preaching at this church and, and, uh, I'm, and it was a, wasn't a really big church, and they had like five services. And this same guy was sitting on the second row. Uh, in fact, he reminded me of you, Doug. Just, just joking. <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> and, and so you really were pretty close, even though, you know, it was full. And so I'm preaching along, and he'd go like this. He'd go, oh. <laughs> And I'd go a little further along. He'd go, <laughs> And it was really bugging me. So after the service... I, I said, what are you doing? He said, I'm eating the word. I said, no, you're not. I said, you're making a fool out of yourself. <laughs> I 
That, but listen to me. You have to make that word yours. I've told this story many times. I'll never forget the, one of the first revelations of a rhema word from God to me was Philippians 4.19. I'm telling you, you can't, you can't steal that from me. It became mine. It became a spoken word to me because I meditated on it and I'd break it down. I'd say, my God. Oh, he's my God. He's my God. If he's my God, it says he shall supply. Not maybe we will, maybe we won't. He shall supply. Well, what's he going to supply? All my needs. See, you start looking at the Word of God like that, all of a sudden, it starts speaking to you. Hebrews 4.12 said the Word of God is alive. It's a living thing. It's alive. It will speak to you. And it is sharper than any two-edged sword. It goes between your spirit and your soul. It is alive. And when you put yourself before the Word of God like that, it's not reading through the Bible. You need to read through the Bible. But I tell you, what I do more than anything is I just take a section and I just stay with it till I get it. Maybe sometimes it's just a scripture. I just stay with it till I get it. When I, where it's being spoken to me. It's not just letters on a page. It's being spoken to me. It becomes mine. Once you get that, you're going to be like Abraham according to what was spoken. Not what was spoken to somebody else. Now, there are, I'll just give you a good example of this. Uh, there are a lot of great books on healing. And I've, I've, read all, I've pretty much read all of them. But I don't just read those books and say, well, because I read this book, Healing's Mine. I want to find out what's in that book that I can get for myself that belongs to me. Amen. I, I tell you, sometimes, listen, I, I've claimed what somebody else got. If they got it, God's no respect to a person. If he got it, I, I'm, I want it. But the point is, you got, it's got to be yours. And you can't get that if you don't read your Bible. You can't get that if you don't study your Bible. You, you, you're not going to get it. I remember Brother, uh, Brother Hagin talked about when he was young, you know, he was paralyzed and he was in bed and he was trying to read his Bible and he could only read like, you know, one page a day. That's all he could do. And he, he, and he, he was talking about, I just could make it you know, just a page or two at a time. That's all I could read. And I'd read it and I'd, I'd read it and, and then I couldn't, my vision, I'd lose my vision. And then he'd go a little further. And he said, until he got over to Mark chapter 11. And I don't I'm not going to talk about it tonight, but but he found out God gave him a word that belonged to him, and all of a sudden God started working in his body. Doctor said he'd be dead in no time; he lived to be eighty six. Now I'm, I use that as an, a, a powerful example. But where are you? You know what? What is it? Where are you? What? What's the need? Where are you? So you got to have a word. Well, give me one, Pastor. Okay, you want it? Get in your Bible. Listen, I'm going to tell you, I dare say there's probably not anything you're facing in your life that we don't have a book in the bookstore where somebody's already overcome it. Make those scriptures yours. I have scriptures on my, on my iPad, and they're, 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 it's a series of scriptures on healing. They're mine. They're mine. I found them. You can't have them. No, you can have them if you want them. But my point is, I'm not giving them to you. You find them for yourself. Because really, to be honest with you, if I give them to you, they're not going to be very valuable to you. Listen, I found, uh, I found a script when I had that uh, 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 cancer, when I had with, with my kidney. I found a scripture in Nahum 1. It says, this affliction will not arise a second time. That's my word. You, you understand that? It may not be yours, but it belongs to me. I say that out of my mouth. I declare that out of my mouth. This affliction will not arise a second time. 
Oh, you, you, that's, that's called faith. Right? Not big faith, just normal faith. Everyday faith. So you've got to have a word, and God, I promise you, has a word for your circumstance. Yes. But you've got to make it a now word. And it's got to belong to you. Okay? Now, notice what else. It says here, verse, verse 19. Listen to, listen to verse 19. Not being weak in faith, I like this translation better. His, wake, his faith didn't fail him. Okay? Not being weak in faith, he did not consider his own body already dead since he was about 100 years old and the deadness of Sarah's womb. Now listen to me. Some people have taken that and gone way, way too far with it. Like, well, I'm just going to ignore my symptoms. That has nothing to do with it. Now I do know this. I know one time I was in a financial bind and the Lord told me to hide all my bills. Quit looking at them. Didn't mean I wasn't going to pay them. I just wasn't looking at them. But, but, but that's not what that says. Okay. Listen to what Abraham, Abraham, the Greek text says it this way. He considered his body, and it's exactly the same Greek word. It's a double negative, I think is what they call it. And considered not to consider it. In other words, he said, okay, I see that my body's 100 years old. When I go down to get water and I look in the water, I see that body. I know, but I choose not to consider that. I choose rather to consider God's word that he promised me. That's called faith. It doesn't mean you ignore something. It means you consider something else of more value than your body. He did look at the facts and decided I'm not looking at them. He did not allow his circumstances, listen to me, to weaken his faith. For that to rise above what he believed. And listen, I know what it is to be in a place where you're, you're trying to keep your head above water. But listen to me. If that's where you are, dog paddle and speak the word. Amen. Do whatever you, it takes. And, and we can, we're going to get into this later on because there's another component to faith and is that is you have to act on what you believe. Yeah. Amen. I'll give you a good example of this. We had a lady in our church years ago. She was a school teacher. And uh, I, you know, this was in the early days of the church. I was preaching on faith and, and uh, she said she woke up one morning and she felt horrible. And she said, I'm going to just call in sick today. I'm going to just stay in bed today. And she said, and I know this, don't read anything into this, but she said, I heard Pastor Sam say, well, people don't stay in bed. Well, it, then she got a word from the Lord about it. It wasn't just me saying it, but, but she got a word from the Lord. She said, you know, that's right. Well, well, people don't lay in bed. I'm healed in Jesus' name. I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus. She got out of bed and barely made it to the shower to get dressed for work. But by the time she got dressed, she was totally healed. Now, sometimes people lay in bed and I wonder why the Lord's not working in my life. Well, he wants to. He'll love you right where you are, but that doesn't mean you're going to be healed. You have to take your faith and grab hold of the promises of God. Everybody still with me? He, he did not allow his circumstances to rise above what he believed. All right, now listen to the next thing. Verse 20. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. 
you have to make up your mind. Listen, I've had to do this so many times, and sometimes it's, you, you've just got to make a commitment, I'm going to do this. You have to make up your mind, I am going to value the Word of God in my life more than I'm going to value these circumstances. I'm just going to make up, I'm just going to do it. That's what he was doing. He did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief. The word there, waver, means to withdraw or oppose the word of God. You'd be surprised how many people just say, well, I did, that doesn't work, that doesn't work, that doesn't work. And, and they're going by what their circumstances are telling them, and, and it's not working. But that doesn't mean it won't work if you stay with it and you don't give up and you don't give in. Everybody still with me? Yes. You've got to hear what I'm saying. Listen to, let me, let me read you this in James. Pretty blunt, okay? It, this is talking about um, um, about getting wisdom about something, but it applies because it's faith. So listen to what it says in verse six of James one. Let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man suppose he will receive anything from the Lord. Wow. He is a double-minded man, unstable in all his ways. Now, listen. Listen to me. We're going to all have doubts. There are going to always be things that come in your mind, but you've got to make up your mind to push them out. You've got to say, no, that's not what I believe. That's not what I'm expecting. I'm not going to live that way. I'm not going to be double-minded. This is what God said. This is what his word said. And I am not going to waver off what God's word says. Now, maybe you don't want to, maybe you don't want to walk in faith. But I'm just telling you, if you want to receive from God, you've got to stay strong in your faith. Don't give up. Don't give in. And you just have to keep fighting the fight. I've got a friend right now, a missionary friend, who's, who's had several physical battles in his body. And, you know, and he just had to fight through it. And he's back up and running. And all of a sudden, something else hit him. Well, what's he doing? Same thing he did before. He's believing God, standing and fighting it off. It's not like you're going to be perfect because you live in a carnal, physical body that starts getting old the day you're born. Blame Adam for that. Amen. So we've got to fight. Well, I don't want to. Okay. That's fine. The, 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 the couple that I told you about that... Uh, um, said that, that left our church because they just couldn't do what I preached. I went to visit her in the hospital. She had cancer. She was dying of cancer. And she wanted to know, how do you do this? How do you do this? And I knew in my spirit, it, she's just going to heaven. Hey, good news. Your faith still works. You go to heaven. Amen. Uh, Tim Kilstrom was my associate for many years. He was here for the, he pastors in Nebraska now, but he was here for the Freedom Crusade. But, but he had a man in his church that, that uh, the doctor said, you're going to die. It's terminal. You had cancer. You're going to die. And, and uh, so he, he went to talk to him. And the guy said, yeah, I guess I'm going to die. I'm ready to go, I guess. And, and uh, so <laughs> um, Tim said, well, if he's ready to die, I might as well just talk to him about heaven. So he said, I just go in there every day and just read the Bible about heaven and talk to him about heaven and people who'd gone to heaven. And, and he said he got so excited about it, he got healed. <laughs> so your faith is going to work. Okay. But, don't, don't, but, 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 but fight. Fight for it. Don't, don't I, 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 I read this. I like what it says when it talks about Abraham was old and his faith still didn't quit. He didn't give up when he got older. Hundred's pretty. That's up there, right? Okay. All right. The last thing. Listen. Listen to what it says. 
He didn't waver at the promise of God through unbelief. But listen to this. Was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God, being fully convinced what he had promised he was able to perform. What he promised he was able to perform. Now, I want to discourage you, but this was a 25-year trek with him before it actually came to pass. Now, I don't believe that's, that has to be the case. I'm just telling you in his situation. So he had to, uh, uh, you have to be strong in faith, giving glory to God. One translation says it this way, and I really like this. His faith made him strong. You know, you know why Caleb, Caleb, when he was 80 years old, said, give me this mountain? Because his, his faith stayed strong. He didn't give up on life. He didn't give in. He didn't say, well, you know, I've had a good life. I'm 80 years old. You know what he did? He told Moses, he says, you know what? You promised me a mountain 40 years ago if I stayed with you. Give me that mountain. I'm as strong as the day I was when I was 40 years old, and I want my mountain. Hallelujah. Faith will make you strong. It'll keep you strong. It'll keep you moving forward in your life. I, I, have, I have, listen, I have people, especially high school friends and people like that, that we, we had a little reunion a while back, a few years ago, you know, our 50th reunion. And I was raised in a small town. Everybody knew everybody, okay? Well, where's so-and-so? Well, they don't drive after dark anymore. <laughs> we're so, oh, well, they, they don't do, they, 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 they just stay home. They don't go anywhere. Hey, Sam and Sammy Moses drive to church every time the doors are open, rain or shine. They're almost in their 80s. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm just trying to be nice. The point is, your faith makes you strong. It makes you strong in all your life. It, when you're, when you, your, your attitude is, I'm a believer. I'm not a doubter. I'm believing God. Believe for more. Believe for something different. Believe, just get out there and use your faith on something. Don't live, don't live in the past. Stay, let your faith keep you strong and stay fully persuaded. I like what the Amplified Bible says. Fully satisfied and assured that God is able and mighty to keep his word and do what he promised. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's where we got to live our lives. So you got it. You got what it takes. You don't have to be, you don't have to be in the ministry. You don't have to be some faith giant. You don't have to have been serving God for 40 or 50 years. Actually, to be honest with you, I've seen a lot of people's faith wane in their, in their latter years rather than get stronger. No, don't do that. Let God do something in your life. Amen? He'll do it. Praise God. Y'all get anything out of this tonight? Hallelujah. Amen. Well, Brenda, come on up here and give everybody a... Well, let me pray Amen. over these prayers. I forgot these prayer requests. Let me have them real quick. Thank you. Just stay up here with me. Father, we just bless you. We pray over all these prayer requests. Lord, we thank you for supernatural wisdom. We thank you for healing, Father. Thank you for strength. Lord, we thank you for a financial miracle, for the gifts of, of the Spirit working in these. Lord, we thank you for our supernatural power working in every one of these that have asked for these prayer, prayer requests. Lord, you're the great God who meets every need. You give the right job at the right time. In, the Jesus, in Jesus' name, thank you, Lord, for supernatural direction in, in, these, in these, these that are seeking direction. And we speak your blessings over them in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. All right. Amen. Thank you for coming tonight. If you're a first-time guest, you are special to us, and we would love to meet you. Uh, if you would, just please take the card. Uh, it's in the seat behind you. 
and fill it out. And then you can meet us at the Information Center and we'll be more than happy to meet, greet you and put a special gift in your hand. Amen. We, back by popular demand, we are having family fun night, July 30th. On campus here at 530. Again, that's July the 30th. And uh, we'll have a great time, time of uh, fellowship, fun, uh, games, and free food. And so we'd love to have you uh, come be a part. Uh, if you will, please stand. If you brought your tithes and offerings this evening, we'll have the offering containers in the back. And again, uh, thank you for being with us tonight. We will have Sunday service, so I look forward to seeing you then. You're dismissed.